What's up guys, this is Rex here with Torch Prep. We are diving back into test two. We're on problem number 10. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, read through the question on test, 10 and, um, in test two, problem 10. Press play again when you are ready to go. Awesome, so what we have here is an interesting question. Plenty of arcs and angles all within this circle bisecting lines, diameters, tangent lines, all this stuff. So if you're not very comfortable with geometry, I would say this is definitely a question I would skip during the survey portion and do dur during the work portion. If you are comfortable with geometry and you remember the basic rules of tangent lines, the diameter, how to find the angle of an arc and how that corresponds to angles inside a circle, all of those details, if you're comfortable with those, and you remember those rules, this should not be hard, and you could possibly do it during the survey. If you're needing help with this, listen closely, because the logic of how we're going to find out which of these arcs and angles has the largest degree, all of them is, every step of the way is going to remind you of a rule. Now, I have the image here, and we have our different points labeled, and the problem gives us four basic pieces of information. So, L, K, that line segment, is the diameter of the entire circle drawn here. I know it's more the shape of a potato, but pretend like that's a circle. H here is on the circle as well. Important detail. J way out here is not on the circle, but important to note that J is on the line LK. So LK, if you extend it beyond the diameter of the circle, J, is extended out there. And finally, JM, this line here, is on the circle as a tangent line, meeting the circle at M. From those details, we're gonna look and devise uh, and deduce through all of these examples, F through K, which one is the largest. One step at a time, we're gonna be able to define all of these. Cool thing about this question though, you don't have to know exactly what all their degrees are, because when you find out are, is one 60 degrees above, 90 degrees or above, one will stand out. When you know the rules to this, it's pretty simple. So, let's start with that final point they gave us, that JM is a tangent line to the circle at point M. We know the rules of a tangent line to a circle is the angle that that tangent line will make from a line from the radius of the middle circle right here is 90 degrees. We know that this, and that actually happens to be H, J, M, G, is 90 degrees because that is the definition of a tangent line meeting a circle at one point, the angle between that line and a perpendicular line from the radius, of the radius will be 90 degrees. So we know that H is gonna equal 90 degrees. Excellent. Let's look at another one. We have LHK. You may notice as well, LHK, if you went back from K to L, also forms a triangle. We know that LK is the diameter. So, because the diameter kind of bisects the entire circle into half, we know that any, that any single, um, that any triangle formed inside this using one side um, as, the, as like a hypotenuse of the diameter, the degrees inside this triangle, LHK, will be 180 degrees. And it kind of makes sense, because if the degrees around the entire circle are 360, what are the degrees in half of a circle? 80, the same as a triangle. Also, another rule that if you have a triangle created out of a half circle, not only are all the degrees going to equal 180, the angle opposite the diameter is going to be 90 degrees. We know that is 90 degrees, so the angle LHK also equals 90 degrees. So obviously, we wanna know which one of these angles or arches is the largest. These two cannot be the correct answer because they are equal. Now, let's take a look at this last angle before we get into these two arches, uh, arches, arches up at the top. So K, the option they give us is the angle of M, J, L. 
Same thing as M, J, G. So pretty much in this right triangle we already established, they want to know what is the angle right here. I don't know what it is because we don't have, um, if this is the right triangle, we know that they all have to equal 180 degrees like any triangle and this is 90 degrees. I, without this angle, I don't know this. But you know what I do know is that the angle or the yeah, measure of MJG is obviously going to be less than 90 degrees. So if it, this is already smaller than some of our other examples, I know that this angle right here is going to be smaller than my two right triangles. So K cannot be the correct answer either. All right? And look, we got this far just by starting with this tangent line and knowing that when your diameter is the hypotenuse inside a semicircle, the opposite angle will be 90 degrees and we form a 180 degree right triangle. Those two rules that we know got us this far. Now we have two arcs that we have to define. I'm gonna give them a double line. There, the arc L, M, and also the arc M, K. So, how do you find the arc of um, the, the degree of any arc on a circle? The degree of this arc makes logical sense, and here's the rule, is equal to the angle it corresponds to at the center of the circle. So if we knew this angle right here, we would know the angle of this arc, MK. You know what we know about this angle? Is it's also the same angle because it corresponds to M and K and J are all on the same line. The angle here is also part of this um, 90 degree triangle. And if this is 90 degrees, and we know this is less than 90 degrees, also this angle here will also have to be less than 90 degrees, meaning angle G is less than 90 degrees, MGJ. Its arc corresponds to the edge of the circle, MK, also has to be less than, oh, not equal to, less than 90 degrees. So, good news, you have already gotten four of them logically erased. We know it has to be LM. Just for fun, let me show you an obvious logical assertion of why LM is the largest angle. Now, the arc of L all the way over to K, that's a semicircle, right? What are the degrees going to be around that arc? 180 degrees, correct, very correct. And if, so really this whole arc of half that semicircle is bisected into two pieces, L to M and M to K. Now if I know that M to K is less than 90 degrees, if I have 180 degrees minus less than 90 degrees, I know that LM has to be more than 90 degrees. So let's pretend like MK is actually uh, 60 degrees. But 180 degrees minus 60 degrees, that'd make LM like 120 degrees. You can plug in any of those numbers and realize that LM has to equal more than 90 degrees because we've already established the angle of the arc MK. So by process of elimination and by a proof that we know through the uh, rules of arcs and angles, tangent lines and right triangles, you know that the answer is F. Excellent job. Go ahead and go to the next problem.